This lesson deals with Bode diagrams. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 12, starting on page 3. In this chapter, we're going to take a look at sketching the magnitude and angle versus frequency with a series of straight line segments, which will allow us to approximate the behavior of the transfer function. This technique was invented by Heinrich Bode in the 1930s while he worked at Bell Laboratories. Let me introduce the problem through an example. Consider this audio frequency inverting amplifier, which consists of an op amp with a feedback resistor R2 and an input impedance called Z1, which is a series combination of an R and a C. Let's solve for the transfer function of V out over Vn. Well, we've done this before with resistive circuits. Let's just use the previous results and replace our resistive terms maybe by an impedance. In other words, the output over the input would be Z2 over Z1 with a minus sign. Let me emphasize again that we're doing phasor analysis and put the phasor bar over our variables of V out and Vn. The impedance Z2 is just a resistor, so just R2, and then Z1 is the series combination of R1 and the capacitor C1, but its impedance is 1 over J omega C. I'll multiply numerator and denominator by J omega C1, and you get a 1 here, and then J omega C1 times R1, and in the numerator we'll get a minus J omega C1 times R2. The body plot is sketching the magnitude and angle of this transfer function versus frequency, so let's do that. The magnitude would be the ratio of the magnitude of the numerator divided by the magnitude of the denominator. That would be the real part squared, which is zero, and then minus omega C1 R2. Not the J, but the things that multiply J squared and then square root. In the denominator, one squared and then omega C1 R1 squared. The squaring here and the square root gets rid of the minus sign. Magnitudes can only be positive, so it's gonna be omega C1 R2. And then in the denominator, I'll have one plus omega squared C1 squared R1 squared square root. The angle is the angle of the numerator minus the angle of the denominator. This is just minus j times something, so it's going to be minus 90 degrees. And then for the denominator, it's the arctangent of the imaginary part divided by the real part. And so the overall angle is the difference of these two. And as you can see here, both the magnitude and angle vary with frequency. Although we can plot the magnitude and angle versus frequency, it doesn't leave us with much insight as to what's going on. Bode plots of a transfer function allow us to see the approximate value of the magnitude and angle versus frequency by using straight line segments. Let's see how we might be able to do that. Suppose that we factor the transfer function on the previous page into a product of terms. So let's do this. Let's take the term minus C1R2, multiply that by J omega, and then multiply that by the reciprocal of the denominator. In other words, 1 over 1 plus J omega C1R1. So I've got a product of terms here. Or we could talk about this in general as having a transfer function that has a numerator and denominator. And if we factor that into terms, we could then find the magnitude and angle of all the terms in the numerator. And that would be just multiplying those in our transfer functions. So this would have a magnitude and angle, and this would have a magnitude and angle. But let me write the denominator in the following way. Let's write this as the reciprocal of the magnitude of d sub a. And then the angle of whatever's here, we take the negative of it, and we put that as a term as a product. I'm just going to call that phi sub a. Likewise, for this term, db, the reciprocal for the magnitude, and whatever angle here is, we'll take the negative of it. I'm just going to call that a phi sub b. What's interesting here is that the overall magnitude is the product of all the magnitudes, and the overall angle is the sum of the angles. So if we could sketch these individual terms by inspection, then the overall transfer function's angle is the sum of these terms. Now, it'd be nice if there was something similar for this, because multiplying pictures is extremely difficult by hand. How do you get things that are multiplied to be added? Well, you could take the log of them. Let's take a look at how we might do that. There already exists the log of a transfer function. It's called a bell, named after Alexander Graham Bell, and it's the log base 10 of power out to power n. Now, in some audio applications, this is a very small number, and so they multiply it by 10 and call it a decibel. In Latin, deci means 10. 10 times the log base 10 of power out to power n. But in this course, we're looking at mostly voltage out over voltage in. So how is that related to power? Well, it's the output voltage squared divided by, if there was an output resistance, its value. And likewise, the power in is the input voltage squared divided by the input resistance. Now, these two are usually not the same value, but their units could cancel. So if we cancel those two, we could then define a new decibel as 10, log base 10, of the square of the output voltage over the square of the input voltage. And you could write that then as voltage transfer function squared, and you could bring that two out in front. So a decibel for voltage transfer functions is going to be 20 times the log base 10 of that ratio of output to input voltage. You could do the same thing for current. So if we go back to the last page then, if we were to take the log of our transfer function and multiply it by 20, then we line up with the definition of a decibel. That's going to be 20 log base 10 of our first term, second term, third term, fourth term, and so on. 
And so our magnitude as well as our angle is found by adding up these individual terms. So we can find the overall magnitude and angle by adding up the graphs of each term plotted individually. We'll see in the following few pages that there's only eight possibilities for those terms in the transfer function. So if we can sketch the magnitude and angle of those individually, then we can build our overall Bode plot by adding up the individual results. I did it here as an addition because it's a lot easier to add things than to subtract them. And these are some of the ideas related to Bode diagrams.